Um, I'd like to say thank you, and, and thank you for having me here. My um, partner in Scrum, Jeff Sutherland, also sends you his best wishes. The topic of um, this is going to be the state of Scrum. Um, it's been in existence for about 19 years, so it's been around for a long time. And I can look back on, on some of the things that have happened with a fair degree of satisfaction. Um, I would like you to know, though, that this um, talk is intended for mature audiences, so listener discretion is advised. Okay? The weak of heart may want to leave. So we're going to talk a little about state of Scrum. Some of that, of course, is state of Agile, state of everything. Back in um, 2001, a number of us who were working on um, processes actually using techniques like extreme programming Scrum that were different from more traditional processes got together to um, talk about what are our concerns about the profession of software development. And our primary concern was um, waterfall and what it had been doing to our profession. And we discovered that we had many things in common, far more things in common than not in common. And so we decided to describe that as a manifesto. And much to our surprise, it, it really took off. Um, probably some of that was the choice of the word agile, which everyone wants to be agile. To say you're not agile is, of course, a bad thing. Uh, Martin Fowler had suggested we instead use the word quack and poof so it wouldn't be so trendy. Um, probably that would have killed the entire thing. So this was 2001, and, and that was, we have been, many of us have been using um, these alternate processes largely based on iterative incremental for a number of years, uh, and this was the first time it really became um, visible. We were, um, much to our amazement, very successful in this, and it had nothing to do with us. I think it had to do with um, people's um, general dissatisfaction with waterfall and predictive techniques. By 2008, um, this is a Forrester Group study, there were more organizations that developed software reporting the use of Agile than using Waterfall. So that was, to us, a, a watershed moment. Um, also, at that same time, there was a report that said of those organizations that were using Agile, 84% um, of them were using Scrum. Now, that's not necessarily any great compliment to Scrum. It, it's both because Scrum is extraordinarily simple um, and well-defined, but it's also, unfortunately, because extreme programming with Kent Beck's um, disappearing from the scene lost a lot of the oomph that it could have had, and that would have been a partner you know, with Scrum. Scrum is, compared to waterfall or a predictive process, very, very simple to understand. In a waterfall process, we start with a lot of planning, and then we come up with the work we're going to do we predict the cost, we predict the date, then we go do the work, and of course, you know, a large number, actually not a large, sometimes we hit the target by delivering what we expected, what we predicted on the date for the cost. Scrum is, is not a whole lot different than that. It is everything we do in a waterfall project, except we do it within one iteration. So stuff you used to do in 18 months, you do in the length of the iteration, which is often one month. Now that, could be very, very hard, except we reduce the number of requirements that you're going to do that on. Otherwise, it would be truly impossible. And so to the extent that we are very, very competent in doing this, um, we will be very, very competent in doing that. And that's been one of the strengths of Scrum is, is all of the good skills coming to the fore so that we can do this iteration after iteration after iteration. One of the great strengths of, of Scrum and actually iterative incremental development is that your risk you know, in a traditional project is maybe 18 months long. In a Scrum project, it's no more than the length of the iteration. So the need for perfection starts dropping because you have no greater risk than one month. That led to a conversation I had with, on a plane with a, a chief financial officer who's, you know, you get somewhere and they say, well, what do you do for a living? Which is always a horrible moment. And, and I said, well, I actually um, help people build software every 30 days. And the guy looks at me and says, you mean I don't have to wait 15 months to get what I don't want? I said, yeah, that's right. We'll give you what you don't want every 30 days. <laughs> and, and that is a huge culture shift because you suddenly don't wait and you're faced all of a sudden with something you have to make decisions about. And that is a tremendous shift in the way we operate with our customers. 
This is a Scrum framework. It's extremely simple, and that's both its strength and its weakness. Very easy to adopt because it's so simple. Um, if you go out and buy a game of chess, you tear off the cellophane, there's a little instruction set inside it about you know, how you can move, what the player's names are and that. Scrum is very similar to that. Very, very small thing. Easy to learn. However, just like chess, when you start playing it, what you discover is you may not be as skilled as you had hoped. And so you start reading all the books on um, tactics and strategies of great um, chess masters. Same thing with Scrum. When you start using it um, and you're within one iteration rather than an entire um, life cycle, you discover how good you are or not at developing software within a period of time. And that's you know, both profoundly exciting and also um, terribly daunting. This was a, a comment we got soon after the um, Agile Manifesto was published. It was from Barry Bain, who I think was trying to show us his support. Um, and he was stating that um, Agile's excellent if you have a small team of highly skilled developers manage themselves in a co-located workplace with great engineering tools and practices, and they will produce great products. What he also had in there was as long as the problem is not very difficult. It took us a while to realize there was something slightly dismissive about that. Um, and what it turned out was it's not true. You can use Agile, you can use Scrum um, with a team of people who have just met each other, don't even know the technology, don't understand the domain. Um, and they will can successfully use Scrum or Agile, and they will produce crap every increment. Now what this means is Scrum, and I'm going to just shift from Scrum to Ad, Agile to Scrum in wording, um, does not guarantee success. All it does is it's a tool with which you get the transparency of how you're doing. Um, I often equate it to um, my mother-in-law, who always wished that um, her daughter could have married someone with, who was better. And this is her just constantly reminding me of my shortcomings. And Scrum is very much like that, um, like inviting your mother-in-law to come live with you. <laughs> Not necessarily you know, a move that you'll enjoy. Now, I was very pleased with the way Scrum was going. And I'm even more pleased with um, the progress many organizations are making. And about two years ago, um, Martin Fowler posted this statement on his blog. And you can read it yourself. But basically, he was saying, um, a lot of organizations are adopting Scrum. I have not seen a tremendous amount of good stuff happening. Um, matter of fact, he called Scrum flaccid. Uh, it took me a dictionary to understand what that meant. But I, uh, just from the word, I had a suspicion it was not a good thing. <laughs> you know, when someone comes and says, hey, man, you're flaccid. This is not an encouraging day. And his comment was, you know, just as I expected, Scrum is not a methodology. It's just a simple framework, and it's full of gaping holes. And the intention is uh, it's a framework within which you can see how you're doing. Um, and if you have great planning practices, they'll shine. If they don't, they'll you know, have a lot of problems. If you have great engineering practices, you'll have no problem building an increment within an iteration. If you don't, it's going to show up. And what he was saying is it was showing up a lot of very difficult um, problems. My expectation was when we were using iterative incremental um, that the developers, the fine developers who had been oppressed for so long by waterfall would rise to the occasion and suddenly have an opportunity to re build really great products of high quality. Much to my surprise, many of the developers um, never knew how to do it or had forgotten how to do it or didn't believe that they had an opportunity to do so. So Scrum, in this case, um, as, as Martin pointed out, um, made visible or transparent a flaccidity. That's an, another big, bad word. Like I said, this is an X-rated presentation. Um, this is then a comment from Jeff Sutherland, who is measuring things. And um, then I validated this because I didn't want to believe it. Of the organizations he um, looked at, and this is mostly northern Europe and the northeastern United States, less than 50% of the organizations that said they were using Scrum said they were using iterative incremental practices. Now, that's like saying you're a person, but you don't have a skeleton. I mean, just doesn't happen. So what we started fearing was, rather than everyone using Scrum and becoming very effective um, organizations at software development, 
Um, just the flight from waterfall was a, initi the initiative or genesis of a lot of that um, percentage we had, and that they really hadn't really taken on a lot of the practices which would produce excellence. And that was, you know, like I said, you wake up in more sub-mornings and you're excited, and other mornings you see big problems, and this was a serious problem. Because I think, as we all know, building quality software is not an easy endeavor. What we started discovering um, was that when teams were building an increment of software every iteration or sprint, they really weren't finishing it. Who would have guessed? And this led us to the, the nexus of probably the success of all Agile, which is a very simple word of done. Who would have guessed? And so your, your, your um, customer comes to you at the end of an iteration and says, wow, let me see that. And you show it to them and he says, so that's done. You say, yep, that's done. And it turns out we mean something different by done than they mean. And I still remember at the end of the third iteration in one company, the customer with um, great foolishness asked us to implement it. And we said, well, <clears throat> it's not really done. She said, well, it looks done. We said, well, it is done to us, but not done to you. And she said, well, how long would it take to do the type of done that I would care about? <laughs> and I mean, this is, uh, th with waterfall, this doesn't happen. You have this huge stabilization phase, and you can have slips and all this, and you have plausible deniability. And this sort of stuff doesn't come up. So this is um, not necessarily a pleasant conversation. And unfortunately, um, if you don't do everything, so an increment is supposed to be a complete slice of the finished product. If the finished product is refactored, has complete automatic test harnesses, um, clean code, refactored code, um, all that and well tested, then that means that slice should be a complete piece of it. And that's pretty difficult. So many, many organizations, more than half of them using Scrum, probably 80%, leave behind at the end of every sprint an undone pile of work. And unfortunately, what we've discovered is this undone work does not accumulate linearly. Um, if you have something you didn't do at the end of the first sprint, by the time you get to the seventh or eighth sprint, the depth of stuff on top of it makes the remediation of it extraordinarily difficult. So this is um, a little benefit of, of iterative incremental and scrum that we would have never expected. If we had had foresight, of course we would have expected it. And so what we'll see is in, in Scrum, we have very little planning up front. Um, this is called just-in-time planning. We try only to do the planning that's going to be useful. And then we have, so enough to start the project, and then we have planning for that iteration for that month, if we have a monthly sprint. And then we deliver or develop it, and we're done. Development includes stabilization, making sure it's complete. Then planning, stable development, planning, development. And maybe at the end, you know, we have some final stuff to do to prep the product, to implement, to install, to ship. What we've been finding instead is, yes, indeed, we have a small amount of time planning up front. Then we have planning, development, planning, development. But at the end, there is a huge period of unknown duration, where it's, which is still stabilization. And if anything, that's an indication that Every sprint, every iteration, we are not building something that is quality, that is done. And you have to ask why, and you know, if you ask a number of people you know, why they didn't actually finish completely what they were doing, and they said, we didn't have time. And I was like, well, if I take the time you had here and I take the amount of stabilization, it's actually the same amount, but far less painful if you just do it at one point in time. So there seems to be in all developers' heads a little metronome which says how fast we have to go no matter how quality of a product we build. Well, I just didn't have time. Interesting. This is um, an example from the Adobe um, Creative Suite product. They have about 400 developers on it. And they had adopted Scrum. And um, they had all their teams developing their increments piece by piece by piece. And they decided um, that at the end of the last sprint, code complete, they would then pull it together and make it work, right? And I, I guess I turned white. And I, <laughs> they were like, well, what's wrong? I said, well, I'd really highly recommend that you try to pull it together so it's potentially shippable every sprint. You know, integrate all the team's work, integration test it, so you don't go forward 
if it doesn't work. 